Bora TV. The world is thinking. Apropos the transnational, you, you seem so taken with the 18th century. What is it about that remarkable period that has attracted you and brought you back time and again, both as a nonfiction writer and a fiction writer? Well, I think I think it's it's really the the, the birth of, of modernism. I think um, it's it's a birth of democracy. To in in many countries, and um, it certainly is the the founding of of this 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 nation, and uh, I think it's a it's a it's a it's a transformative uh, century, much more transformative. What happened in the seventeenth century? That began to be as transformative as the as as, in the, as the 18th was. Yeah. I mean that same sense of transition that leaves someone like Marie Antoinette or Ferzin or, to some extent, Madame de Stael in a position where the world is changing underneath them and this modernity is being born. And you capture that, I think, so brilliantly in talking about those people living at that. I tell you, when you you asked me about about the the the. the Likes of you know of doing fiction or nonfiction. What I like, what I like, uh, is revising people's notions of great historical figures. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the uh, Louis the Sixteenth has been presented as adult yeah. to most of us, and he was actually an intellectual. He's a man. He was the greatest Latinist of his time. He uh, trans. He had perfect English. He translated Milton knew hundreds of lines of Milton by heart. This man lost. is an intellectual. He was rather weak in his ways of ruling. He was indecisive. He was very gauche. He was very timid. But his intellectual life was intense. And it's something which I never knew myself until I tackled this last book. And this is one of the great pleasures I find of doing historical fiction is to be able to revise one's views of historical figures. Remarkable.